Hey there mudroomers, it's Carmen here with Mako and today we wanted to go over our glaze profile for one of our new stonework glazes from this year which is Azurite. So first I'll kind of go over some basic information on the label and then go into some detail about the performance of this product. So here is our new label. Um, I did go into detail with this with our Rainforest Glaze Profile video, but I just want to do a little bit of an overview in case you missed that. If you did, definitely check it out. But some basic info here, you're going to be able to find the cone range down here on the label. So we recommend cone 5 to 10 for all of our stoneware glazes actually. And there will be a slight variation in performance between the cone temperatures. This particular tile, as well as most of our samples are gonna be fired to cone six on a white clay body. So anything outside of that might vary from this, this sample here. You can find our cone 10 results on our website, as well as actually over here on our label, we have cone six and cone 10 reduction results on our label. And anything outside of that, definitely consult Mako Mudroom Society or we always encourage to do testing on your own tiles in your own clay body and firing environment. There can be a lot of variation in performance even if you think you're doing everything the same. But this is our recommended firing range, cone 5 to 10, because all of our glazes do perform within that range. And then on the side here, you're going to see our ACMI certification. This particular one does have an AP seal, so there's no CL warning or anything like that. And then here we have our dinnerware safe recommendation. This glaze in particular is not recommended for dinnerware due to the surface durability, so highly acidic substances can break the surface down. We are actually currently doing some testing as to the performance if we layer it with a clear glaze, if that enhances the surface durability. But even if that is the case, uh, we would still not recommend this on surfaces that come into contact with food. So perhaps on the outside of a wear that's not directly coming into contact with any food would be the preferred use for this particular glaze. And here we have the lot number. So this is going to be the number that you need to report any technical reports or anything like that. So if you do need to contact technical, we'll definitely ask you for this, as well as your clay body and firing information. So just go ahead and have that handy. And then on the side here, we have our uh, firing results, basic application instructions, and then any suggestions and tips that we have here. And included in that we have we are we do mention that four of our new glazes from this release, Azurite, Rainforest, Himalayan Salt, and Landslide, they all do have the same base glaze. So they are going to have similar performance characteristics, which is kind of nice. We do have another series like that in our stoneware glaze line. It's kind of the Norris Blue series. We have Lavender Mist, Norris Blue, Sand and Sea, Frosted Lemon, Raspberry Mist. All of those have the same base but different colors. So they'll perform similar with a, a little bit different color going on there. So that's some information on the label. We don't need any additional warning down here because it's AP, not CL. Um, but there is the general safety information as well as mentioning why we deem it to be not suitable for dinnerware. So that's just some general information on the label. Hopefully that helps you guys utilize the label as a resource because it is a, a nice resource to have. So to start out, we can just go over the general cone six performance. So here I have cone six fired on a white stoneware slip cast body, one, two, and three coats. As you can see, it's kind of like this brown green where it's applied thin, which showcases itself when it breaks over surface texture. And then when you get up to three coats, you get that beautiful rich blue saturation, but there is a bit of mobility that happens with this as well. And this is a nice, very smooth satin matte finish. So 
So here we have it at three coats, nice smooth finish, and then we have the pooling around the bottom. So it doesn't look like this was applied really heavy enough to produce the pooling, but typically you would have pooling in these areas. So I can actually bring this cone five comparison. The cone five comparison seems like it was applied a little bit thicker, so it kind of showcases the blue and the gloss a little bit better. But again, since this does have a little bit less heat work, it is a bit drier of a finish. So this is gonna be a really smooth finish and this has a little bit of tooth to it. So, the, but otherwise the aesthetic and the look of the glaze looks really similar between the two firing temperatures. So here you can actually see a bit more glaze applied on this one it does start to actually even flux out a bit. So this one was applied pretty heavy, but not so heavy that it's it's moving or anything like that. We haven't really had much mobility applying three heavy coats of this, but this does in produce mobility when you are using it in combination. And next we can showcase this glaze with flux. So as I've done in our previous glaze profiles, we have two coats of flux underneath three coats of azurite. So here we did one coat of azurite all the way to the bottom, two coats about here and three coats about to here. So this is called receding your coats and this is something that's a really good thing to put into your practice if you are using glazes that are a little bit mobile so that you can kind of make up for that mobility and still have a really nicely glazed piece. So here I did two coats of flux underneath the azurite and we have light flux here and dark flux on this side here. And then we have this side, we did the flux over the azurite. So I applied the azurite first and then did the flux on top. So the light flux is here and the dark flux is here. This is a really, really nice, beautiful finish. That flux adds some really nice mobility and actually doesn't seem to make it super glossy aside from where it's really heavy, which is kind of interesting. This glaze has been really interesting to use in combination because where we can't really anticipate the finish, uh, which is kind of exciting, but definitely with that in mind, always be sure to do some tests on your pieces so that you can anticipate what it'll look like. And here we have a beautiful cone 10 reduction result. We have three coats on the whole thing, this gorgeous green breaking. And on this particular sample, we did have some nice crystal development, which is really, really nice. I actually have Another sample here showcasing kind of the variety that can happen in different firings. Uh, so here it is another cone 10 reduction firing that doesn't really have as much crystal development, but still that beautiful green color with these nice blue striations. And then on the back here, we have flux over azurite. So I did three coats of flux receding the coats just like I did on the cone six example and then did two coats of the flux on top. We have light flux here and dark flux here. This sample did showcase the crystal blooming through the flux which is just totally gorgeous. I love this bright color variation that happens along with that crystal development. And next we can showcase the azurite on a variety of clay bodies. Here we have it fired on a white speckled clay. This was fired in a cone six kiln with a slow cool. We found that the slow cool was helpful in reducing pinholing that happened. Our initial test did produce pinholing on all three of these clay bodies. We found that the slow cool was the most useful in eliminating the pinholes. We did do a couple of tests using a 10 minute hold on a cone six firing, but still had a bit of pinholing occur in that instance. So this was the, the most success that we had using it on a different clay body or the light speckled clay. And then we have it on this brown speckled clay 
Unfortunately, the slow cool did not seem to help any of the pinholing. Uh, the hold wasn't helpful with that. I'm hoping to have some tests out of the kiln very soon where we do a different glaze on the inside and outside and to see if that showcases any bit of a difference, including a slow cool. So we're still testing to try to get this to be really successful on a dark or on a brown speckled clay body and we'll definitely be sure to link any any info that we have in regards to that there but it could be a really nice texture glaze or something like that uh, definitely would not want to use that on dinnerware this is kind of something that you would think about using a practical consideration because that is a very undesirable surface but and then here we have it on a dark brown clay body this clay seems to really absorb the color a lot. Where it's pooled, we do get a little bit of a blue, but really this just kind of produces a nice kind of sheen on a darker clay. This one was fired to cone six with a slow cool. It's kind of the same deal as this light speckled clay. The hold did kind of help some of the pinholing, but the most successful was with the, the slow cool on this particular one. And finally, I would like to go over how this glaze works in combination. So just like rainforest, azurite, Himalayan salt, and landslide, all of those are going to perform very similar. So this is a really, really nice example showcasing the variation and striations that kind of happen when you're using this in combination. So here we have azurite over, over raspberry mist. So we do two coats of each. Put the raspberry mist first and then the azurite on afterwards and you can see how the azurite kind of pools and moves with a lot of variety so it's not going to be just like one flat color it adds a lot of movement and some nice variation throughout and you can see it does add some good movement to this here And we'll just do a quick go through of a couple combos that I picked out. We do these on flat surfaces. So these tiles are fire, fired totally flat. This kind of makes the glaze kind of pool on the top here. So we utilize these tiles to help choose what colors or what combinations we use for our combo sheets. And this gives us information as to kind of the reaction with the colors, but since this does pr produce a lot of mobility, there will be some color and performance variation. So if you do really like any of these combos, just know to test it on the, uh, something vertical if you want to understand what it looks like vertically, because it will look a bit different than it does here. So we have Azurite over Aurora Green. We're just going to do a little quiz quiz me on these glazes here. Um, this is azurite over sandstone. Azurite over desert dusk. Or maybe that's honeycomb. That's honeycomb. Azurite over honeycomb. Azurite over winter wood. I love this glazing combination. I bet this would produce a lot of mobility. Here we have Azurite over matte black. So this is kind of interesting that it fluxes out a little bit. I like this contrast between the matte and the glossy black. Ah, here's the desert dusk. I knew it was in there. So here's Azurite over desert dusk. I love, again, this crystal development and the contrast with the matte and the gloss. Azurite over Cordovan. Azurite over copper float. So this I would think would be a really interesting one where it's kind of matte at the top and slowly fades into a gloss at the bottom where all the glaze is kind of gathering. Be a nice gradation of a finish. Here's Azurite over oyster. And then last little pile. We have Azure right over Capri Blue. So this is kind of, yesterday I think I showcased the Capri Blue with Rainforest. So again, this one kind of remains matte. It's really, really nice, consistent finish going on here. 
This is azurite over olive float. I love this green and this depth that's created here. So I would kind of anticipate on a vertical piece, you'd start getting lines and striations of this bright color with a nice dark background. I think it'd be really, really pretty. Here we have azure over matte white. This one stayed matte for the most part. There's a little bit of gloss there, so it could showcase it on a vertical surface. Here we have azurite over satin patina. This one was really stiff. You can kind of see almost there's a texture with it. It's kind of cool. And then here we have azurite over abalone. And so this, the abalone is kind of similar in a sense that it is a matte glaze that pools a nice gloss. So this produces a nice matte finish, but I bet it would be really, really glossy if you had it on really heavy or pooling around any texture. So that's all that I have for Azurite. Definitely be sure to check out our website. It's an amazing resource. We have a searchable combo gallery as well as printable PDFs of all of our combo sheets that we've done so far. We will continue to add combo sheets showcasing our new glazes, so definitely stay tuned for those. We have a searchable um, distributor page as well on our website, so that's really helpful in finding your closest Mako distributor to order any glazes from. And as I we've been saying previously, keep your eyes peeled for our 2021 glaze sample kit. You'll be able to order it on our website as well as get it from your distributor where for our US shipments, we're doing $10 plus shipping from our website. So definitely check that out. So you can do some testing with these glazes and figure out which one's your favorite or all of them are your favorite. So thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. And as always, make it Mako.